Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good day. In today's video, we are going to wrap up the entire Magical Grid series by writing out the animation code for the cells inside of our grid. So I wanna kind of remind you guys what that animation looks like right here. And this is kind of the completed version of the application, right? And as I'm kind of panning across the device here, we get the cells to animate in, does this zoom in effect. And then once you let go of the device, the cell zooms back out into the original location of the cell. And there's a very slight bouncing effect and I'll show you guys how to do that as well. And where do I want to start off today? Well, let's take a look at our current app right here. And as I'm kind of panning across the screen like this, it fills in each one of these cells with a white color. Now this app by itself, I think is kind of cool. You know, you can make some really, really cool drawings and uh, it's not all that bad. So to kind of show you guys how to perform this animation right here, we will have to look at our code inside of view controller and let's head on over to handle pan inside of the view controller .swift file and see what we can do here. All right. Now let's kind of take a look at line 51 where we are turning the cell to this white color like that. And if I, let's say comment this guy out and let's say we perform an animation with UI view dot animate with duration here. I have a couple of different parameters that I can set. The first is duration, then we have delay. And this also has this thing called damping and spring velocity. And I'll kind of show you guys what kind of parameters I'll use here. First with duration of 0 0.5 for the animation duration, delay is zero. Damping, I'll use one, and spring velocity, I will also use one. The animation options, let's use dot curve ease out, and that'll provide a kind of an acceleration in the beginning, and then I believe it slows down at the end of 0 0.5 seconds here. And for the animation block, I will hit enter, it gives me this, and let's say cell view dot background color, and I will change this to black instead of the white. For the completion block, we will just use nil because I am not exactly too concerned about what happens when the animation is finished. So I'm going to run this and let's see what that animation gives us here. So you kind of see as I'm mousing over, the cell actually goes from its original color to this blackish color like that. And you can kind of see that it animates into that black color instead of just popping directly to the black. So that's what you get. And that's kind of how the animation works. And to change the actual zooming of the cell so that it zooms in, we're just going to change the scale of the cell view itself. So what you can do in here is say cell view dot layer dot transform right here. So it is a type CA transform 3D. So let's see, CA transform 3D make scale. This actually gives you some kind of transform that you can play around with. And inside of the S, X, S, Y, and S, Z, I'm just going to use the value of three and uh, remove the black color just because I don't need the cell to be black anymore. So basically this transform right here will scale each one of the axes from one to three. And that effect kind of gives you this right here. So you can kind of see how the cells are growing, right? And every time you mouse over a cell that hasn't grown yet, you can see the effect like that. So the question now is how do I get the cell to actually show in front of the other cells so that you know which cell is being animated like that? So that's pretty easy. If you just go up here, perhaps on line 54, and you say view, this is the view controller's entire view, and you hit dot bring sub view to front and the view that you want to bring in is the actual cell view that you're animating and by doing that this cell right here let's see we can unwrap it with an apostrophe is that what it's called a exclamation mark i believe and that will give you the cell that needs to be brought up to the front most i guess z index of the view and that's the effect that you'll have right so instead of using this bang operator guy, why don't we unwrap it a little bit safer? So let me remove that commented outline and I will just use a guard statement right here, else return. So basically cell view will now 
be a non-optional like that. And we can remove these question marks as well as the bang operator. This way we don't have to deal with this optional guy. And I believe this is called optional binding. And uh, this just makes your code a little bit easier to read. And running that, we get this right here. All right, so the next question is, now that I have my cells animating in, how do I animate the cells that are already grown? How do I animate it back out so that only the cell that I'm touching is being zoomed in like this? Okay, so I want to animate all of the entire trail of cells back into its original location. So the way to do that is to kind of keep track of which cell you are touching with a kind of variable up here. And I'll call this variable selected cell perhaps and uh, let it be of type UI view and optional because it'll start off as nil and that means that we haven't really selected any cell yet. And basically I will first go down here where I have the view that I'm touching and I'll just simply check if selected cell is equal to or is not equal to the cell that we are touching. I will simply say UI view you know, dot animate and enter in the same parameters, I suppose, of 0 0.5, 0, and 1, and 1 like that. Options will be curve ease out, and animation will hit enter, and we will say selected cell dot layer dot transform equals CA identity, like that, CA transform 3D identity, and this basically gets you back to a scale value of 1. I believe this needs to say self and we should be okay. I think this might need a question mark like that. And completion block, we will just use the value of nil. So what does this really do? Well, I'm going to have to keep track of this selected cell somewhere. And basically it's always going to be nil at this point. And that's not going to affect the application at all. And I'm just missing one line right here where I say selected cell equals the actual cell view. And so as we're kind of panning across the device, we're constantly setting the selected cell to whatever cell we're touching. And at some point in time, the selected cell will no longer be equal to the one that we're touching. And when that happens, we're going to hit line 56 and that will cause the selected cell from the previous touch to actually just zoom back out like that. Okay. All right, so that's pretty darn good. All we're missing now is the animation that kind of handles the zooming out of the individual cell as we let go of the touch on our device. So how do we kind of do that inside of a handle pan here? Well, remember handle pan comes with this gesture and what we can do is to actually detect whenever we kind of end the touch inside of our gesture. And you can kind of do that if you scroll down here at the very last portion of the handle pan method. And I'm going to check if gesture, if its state is equal to something. And to check whether it's kind of ended, you just type in dot ended. And let's use a very simple example of background color equals perhaps dot white. And you'll see what happens whenever I let go of the touch on my app once it gets loaded and here we go. So I'm moving, moving, moving. And once I let go, that cell turns white and that's kind of what happens. So instead of morphing these cells background color, let's also use an animation of UI view, animate. And I will use the same call with duration of perhaps 0 0.5. And if you set a delay, you can kind of see what effect that has. So I'll use 0 0.25. And for the damping parameter, let's use 0 0.5 this time and 0 0.5 for the velocity. Curve ease out and animation, hit enter. Completion block, perhaps you can hit enter here. And I'll use an underscore and keep that empty for now. For the animation, I'll simply say cell view dot layer dot transform and let's use CA transform 3D identity like so. And I'm going to run this now and you'll see the cell that we're touching animate out once the gesture state is ended. So let's see. I'm going to mouse over and let go right there. It has a small delay of 0.25 seconds and the moment it zooms out, it kind of bounces. And the reason why it bounces is because the damping is 0.5 and I believe 
uh, the velocity comes into play as well. So 0 0.5 and 0.5 kind of looks like that. If I bump it up to its original size, you get this right here. Hopefully you guys can see it. And that's the animation that you'll get. I think I'm probably losing a couple of frames here, but that's the effect you will have. And it's much smoother if you're not recording your screen at the same time. All right, so that's gonna be it for the Magical Grid series. I really hope you enjoyed watching these three quick episodes, and I hope you picked up some good techniques that you can also apply to your very own applications. Now, if you want more lessons on Swift and iOS development, you can check out the couple of courses that I have linked in the description below. Make sure to give this video a like, and also subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.